Ungoliant and Melka arrive before the trees of Valina. Then the unlight of Ungoliant rose up even to the roots of the trees, and Melka sprang upon the mound, and with his black spear he smote each tree to its core, wounded them deep, and their sap poured forth as it were their blood, and was spilled upon the ground. Hey guys, today we will take a deep look at the story of Ungoliant and Melka. Also if you are new to the channel welcome. Here we will go in depth with all the information you want to learn of Middle-earth and its amazing characters. From where does Sauron come from, to the origins of orcs, ents, and even follow the travels of our most beloved characters. So if you are a fan of this type of content regarding the history of Middle-earth, don't forget to subscribe for more. Also don't forget to turn on the bell notification to be notified whenever new content has been put up on our channel, Dwarfs of Khazad-dûm. About one to two long and informative videos will be posted weekly. These informative videos do take a long time to get together, so don't forget to comment and give a like to help the channel out. So to not take any more time let's get back to our story. Ungoliant was a primordial being that took the shape of a gigantic spider. The word Ungoliant means dark spider in the Sindarin tongue, which was the language spoken by the Sindar elves, the descendants of the Teleri. The true origin of Ungoliant is unknown, and was not even known by the Vela. It is said that she came from the darkness itself that lay about Arda. Ungoliant's origins are truly shrouded in mystery. It is also thought that she may have been one of the Maya, or a lesser spirit, whom Melka corrupted long ago, but she is not listed among the known Aena. Considering that the Aena passed through the void while venturing from the timeless halls to Arda, it is possible she was a powerful female Maya in the form of a spider as the Aena chose their gender according to their personality from the beginning. It is said that the Maya that joined Melka transformed into the fiery beings known as the Borogs as they were fire spirits. Lending to the idea there is a possibility a Maya could have gained the form of a spider being a spirit of the night. However, I believe that she is not a Maya, and I'll tell you why. The reason for this, she already was an ally and follower of Melka before she turned into the spider. We do know she was a primordial spirit of the night named Moru, so being a Maya cannot be ruled out. But this is highly unlikely because even the Aena didn't know what Ungoliant was. So why didn't she turn into the spider before Melka was imprisoned by the Vela? She only became a spider after being attacked by the Vela after Melka was imprisoned. This leads me to believe she took that form because it was a more powerful form of herself. She did it to protect and camouflage herself from the Vela, not because she joined Melka. The most believable theory is that she was wrenched from the void during the Aenulindale as the songs of both Eru and Morgoth brought unbalance to the creation of Arda. It must be this rift that brought the void's darkness into the world. Over time, this darkness manifested itself into those nameless things Gandalf later describes. It is said she was once an ally of Melka in a man when he looked down upon the world with envy. In the later Silmarillion, as documented in Morgoth's Ring and War of the Jewels, Ungoliant is explicitly identified as one of Melka's servants, who in the years of the trees abandoned him prior to settling in Avathar. She had disowned Melka and lived independently. Melka built his forces of Anband and Utumno during the years of the lamps while the Vela fled to Aman, as in those times Melka's power was great. He could take on all the Vela as he was the mightiest of them, he possessed the gifts of all the other. In magical power, influence, corruption, there was no Vela on equal terms, being second in power and might only to Eru. But Melka didn't like to show his power through physical strength, he preferred to challenge the Vela in other ways. He began corrupting the earth and began pouring his essence into his new creations, which in turn made him weaker and weaker, as his armies grew stronger. Although he could not create beings because he was missing the flame imperishable, he was able to corrupt beings by pouring his personal power into his creations. He created trolls out of mockery events. Melka then destroyed the two lamps which were the original sources of light in Arda and attempted to corrupt the awakening of the elves in Quivianin. He captured some elves and then began creating orcs by torturing and twisting them while pouring his own essence and magic into them. The Vela waged war on Melka. By this time, Tulka's physical strength was greater, giving the Vela an advantage in their war. A weakened Melka was defeated and imprisoned by the Lords of the West. 
After imprisoning Melka, the Vela turned to attack Ungoliant. Ungoliant escaped the attacks of the Vela and the hunters of Orom and fled to the southern part of Amman. There, in a ravine south of the mountain Hyamentir, she established her dark abode and took the physical form of a monstrous spider, and craved and sucked up all light she could find. After each feeding, she spun dark webs of gloom that strangled all passing light. Melka was released after being imprisoned for 3,000 years after tricking the Vela into thinking he had changed. When he was released, he began to corrupt the earth again. Eventually, Melka sought out Ungoliant in order to exact his revenge against the Vela and the elves. He came to her in Avathar and told her of his plans. When Melka arrives at Avathar, Ungoliant fears her former master. She hides desperately from Melka when she first sees him approaching her lair. She initially refuses to emerge, believing Melka plans to murder her for deserting him. By this time she is starving to the brink of death, cut off from the light of the Vela by her own webs of darkness. He tries to convince her to join him. Though she was tempted greatly by Melka's plan for her to drink the light of the two trees of Valina, she feared the power of the Vela and was hesitant to accompany him. To mollify her, Melka offered to sate her hunger with whatever she wished if she would aid him. He offers her an assortment of gems he had stolen from the Nolder. She then regains the strength needed to destroy the two trees, which she does alone while Melka waits near Avathar. She helps Melka infiltrate Valina by shrouding both herself and her ally in webs of pure darkness called webs of unlight. Unlight was a weapon and cloak of inexplicable, all-encompassing darkness, used solely by the primal being Ungoliant, which acted as a sort of cloak of invisibility from the Vela. He decided to depart for the trees during one of the Vela's festivities, which would further cause them to remain hidden from the preoccupied Vela. When they see the trees of Valina, which replaced the lamps which lighted the world, Melka uses a spear to stab at the trees, which caused them to release their sap. Ungoliant drained the trees of their sap, poisoned them, and drank the wells of Varda dry. The unlight produced by Ungoliant stymied the pursuit of Orom and Talkas, and Melka escaped to Middle-earth with her. However, her consumption of power of the trees and the wells caused her to swell to a size and shape so vast and hideous, that even Melka began to grow afraid. In the Book of Lost Tales, she is wounded after the poisoning of the Golden Tree by a lone elf named Dorin, whose sword is poisoned by her blood. Dorin had wandered away from the festival with a vaguely foreboding premonition and caught Melka and Ungoliant attacking the two trees. Without a second thought, he rushed to the defense of the two trees and was able to cut off one of Ungoliant's legs despite losing his life in the process and ultimately failing. While Ungoliant is recovering from her wound, Melka kills Dorin and uses his sword to mortally wound the silver tree. After the darkening of Valina, instead of fleeing with Melka, Ungoliant immediately flees southwards towards her lair, and successfully eludes the Vela. It is to note that Tolkien wrote several versions and his stories changed quite a bit as he was constantly adding to the stories before his son Christopher put the versions together as published works. After the destruction of the trees, she also consumed the reserves of light from the wells of Varda. Afterward the light of the trees persisted only within the Silmarils of Fina. Ungoliant and Melka evade the Vela by shrouding them both in the impenetrable darkness she produced. They went to Fina's fortress in search of the Silmarils. The Silmarils were created by Fina in Valina after the unchaining of Melka. According to a legend, Fina conceived the idea of capturing the light of the trees from the hair of Galadriel, which shone with gold and silver. Fina gave his heart to their making and could not duplicate them. Once there, Melka killed Fina's father Finway, the king of the Nolder, and stole all the gems. He and Ungoliant fled to the Northlands of Middle-earth, where his ancient fortresses were. Fina and his sons vow to wage war to reclaim the Silmarils, which start the Wars of the Jewels, known as the Wars of Beleriand, which we will also be covering in later videos. When they arrived in Lammoth in Middle-earth, Melka, now known as Morgoth, hoped to escape to the ruins of Angband where the remnants of his forces awaited him. Suspecting that he intended to leave his promise to her unfulfilled, Ungoliant demanded the gems that Morgoth had stolen from Formenus before they could reach Angband. She devoured them, and grew to an even more monstrous size. 
She then demanded that Morgoth surrender to her the Silmarils. However, he withheld the Silmarils in his right hand, having desired them too greatly to allow the great spider to devour them. She asked him to show his other hand sensing a betrayal, while the Silmarils burned his hand as no evil creature could handle them. However, Morgoth refused, and she attacked him. Weaving her dark webs, she attempted to enmesh him in her nets and take the Silmarils by force. Morgoth gave out a terrible cry of pain as she attacked, which was heard by the Balrogs hibernating under the ruins of Angband. They awoke and immediately rushed to the aid of their lord, tearing apart Ungoliant's webbing with their fiery whips and forcing her to break off her attack. She fled, and the Balrogs prepared to pursue and destroy her, but they were checked by Morgoth, who ordered them to return with him to Angband. Ungoliant's attack on Morgoth left an echoing scream ever after on the land, giving the area the name Lammoth, where it was said that any clamor would echo back from surrounding hills with his voice. Overcome by the Balrog's fiery whips, Ungoliant fled to the Ed Gorgoroth in Beleriand. There, she had many offspring, including Shelob, which spread throughout the Ed Gorgoroth and gave it a reputation as a place of horror. She also attempted to enter Doriath, the realm of Thingol, but was kept at bay by the power of the Myomelian. Many speculate that Ungoliant was indeed stronger than Melka after growing to a massive size, but this can be disproven. It is said that seven Balrog came to his aid, and although they could not harm her, they inflicted pain, and rather than facing them she fled. It is said that by the first age the power of Morgoth had been embedded into the earth and his creatures so much, that he was less powerful than Sauron in the third age. Melian, Amaya, was able to keep Ungoliant at bay after she grew stronger. It is to be noted that Balrogs are in fact Maya as well. Yet Melka, before being known as Morgoth, could take on all the Vela at once. We are talking about the 14 Vela, in which one Vela is extremely more powerful than Amaya. Maya are considered lesser spirits in power and assistance to the Vala. The only reason Ungoliant nearly killed Morgoth was because he was exhausted, weakened, and also burned from the Silmarils which took a great toll on him. A prime Melka, in their previous wars, the most the Vela could do against Melka was to trap him in Mandos, and that was when he had already lost a lot of being. Yet they could not harm his physical form or kill him. Nor could Ungoliant. The Vela could defeat Morgoth in the end only because he had expended vast amounts of power and been reduced to a very low level, and more importantly, in addition to being physically weakened due to his incarnation, Morgoth had lost the link to the world and servants he had corrupted. Manwe expected this and timely intervened, which allowed the material destruction to have been limited to Beleriand and the northern lands. Morgoth was bound to the earth and his creations the same way Sauron was bound to the One Ring, but at a much grander scale. Ungoliant herself eventually disappeared from history. When Ungoliant fled to Nandungatheb, she bred with the great spiders that already lived there. The only thing that made them great was their sheer size, so when she mated with them, they made some monstrous children. Together, the group inspired fear and terror in the surrounding areas and everyone in Beleriand and Middle-earth grew to fear the spawn of Ungoliant. Shelob, the spider Frodo and Sam encountered in Morda is one of her descendants that lived during the Second and Third Ages onward in Middle-earth. Hey friends, hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories on Middle-earth. See you soon.